In section code, we had already introduced how code snippets can be defined in Markdown and Lear script. In this part, we will introduce how such code can be made executable and editable. Any code snippet can be made interactive by attaching a script tag to the end. The idea is the same as for tasks, quizzes, and surveys. The at input is simply a placeholder that gets replaced by the current user input. If the code is in JavaScript and provides a full and executable example, not only pseudocode, then it can be directly executed. Just click on the run button directly below the editor. The console output will be piped into the local shell that appears below the code snippet. It is possible to rerun the example, but you can also make changes, such as the number of loops. When you execute your modified example, a new version will be added to the end of the list. It is possible to go back and forth between versions, and if a previous version gets modified, this will also append a new version. Multiple different code snippets can be combined to form larger projects too. It requires writing them in sequence, without empty lines in between. You can give them names by adding a second parameter after the highlighting definition. Add a plus or to the front of your file name to indicate whether it should be visible by default or not. As previously mentioned, the at input macro gets substituted by the input of the editor, but you can also pass a number to indicate which macro should be substituted by which code block, at input, zero, is equivalent to at input. The result is a project consisting of two files. Each file can be edited separately, while the script tag provides only some basic blue code that tells Lear script what to do with the input. The idea of at output is similar to at input, and you can use this predefined marker only within the header of the last code block. This code block, marked with at output, defines the default output and will be shown directly after loading, even if it is not the result of the script evaluation. This is especially handy if you are using an external service for executing code, and your students are running your course offline at the moment. It's also useful if you want to see this output on other Markdown viewers or on GitHub and refer to the result. If you want to make use of some external functionality, you can also load additional JavaScript modules into Lear script. Simply add the script command to the main definition of your Lear script header. For more information on this, take a look at section script in the macros chapter. If this library has been loaded, it can be used also directly within the script tag. In this case we made use of the computer algebra system, Algebrit, which is used to solve some algebraic equations. The result is a fully functional computer algebra editor where you can experiment and modify equations. The easiest way to execute some code, is simply to add a script tag to the end of your code block. But, sometimes an execution takes longer or requires to execute some asynchronous code. For this purpose, Lear script offers a simple API and event system that will be explained in more detail. For simplicity, all of the following examples will only contain JavaScript code that gets interpreted just by executing at input. To every executed piece of code a send object is associated, which handles all required communication with that specific code block or project in the outer world. Thus, 
Every send module does only exists in this particular scope and it offers different methods for different problems. To start with, there is a log method, which can be used to send different types of outputs directly to the console. But we provide shortcuts for this, via the internal console, which does actually the same. Nevertheless, send.log gives you a little more power when you start to create your own Lear script libraries and you have to handle multiple outputs. And as you can see, you can also pass HTML content directly. As you may have noticed, the last statement of an executed code block also defines the return statement. The output is always interpreted as a string and handled in this way. However, there are some results that are treated differently. These are strings that start with LIA. For example, the string LIA stop is used to tell the system to simply stop the execution, there will be no further output. In this case, you can use console.log to print the result to the terminal. If you want to directly send control messages at various stages of the script, you can use send.lia, which will also directly output the result in the console. If the execution of your code may take longer, include some asynchronous calls, or you need to call an external service, you can indicate this by finishing with the statement, LIA, wait. This will show arrows that loop forever or until they receive a, LIA, stop, signal. You might wonder why there is a need for send.lia if you could also pipe output to the console using send.log or the shorthand console.log. As described in the section about error handling, send.lia gives you more control not only over the shell but also over the editor. See section error handling for more details. The code example below demonstrates how the terminal can be enabled. Following the previous logic, we only have to define LIA terminal as the last statement in order to activate the terminal mode. This mode will remain active until the user clicks on the stop button, formerly known as the execute button, or a LIA stop signal is sent from the script, or the browser is refreshed. To handle the input and the stop events from the terminal in the JavaScript world, we have to define handlers, as shown in the code below. Simply add a function that evaluates or sends your terminal inputs to a foreign server or a WebSocket, or whatever you want. Use the stop handler to close a connection or perform other actions if the user clicks on the stop button. A little side note. There is also a function called console. Clear that clears the console, but it is not triggered by send.log. Instead, this is a shortcut for send.lia, LIA, clear. These were all the LIA commands. In the next section, you will learn how to use the custom-built event system to accomplish even more tasks. All previous functions were executed only within the scope of a single code block, but sometimes it is necessary to connect with other external events. For this purpose, the send object also contains two further generic functions, register and dispatch. Simply use a unique identifier to name an event, followed by a callback function that does whatever you want. Both callbacks are defined in local scope, but by using register and dispatch, you can send messages to any code block. The example below demonstrates how messages are successfully delivered, even if both code blocks are defined on different slides. Adding script tags to the end of every code block can indeed be tedious and cumbersome, resulting in unnecessary copy and paste in your markdown. To alleviate this, 
LearScript offers the possibility to define custom macros. Even more conveniently, you can directly import macros from other courses. The Macros section describes this issue in more detail. This feature enables you to streamline your code and make your markdown files more concise and manageable. As mentioned earlier, send.lia can do more than just passing messages to the terminal output. The editor currently used by Lia script is ACE, which allows marking lines with warnings and errors. Since there is no name associated with a file, like with the at input, zero, macro, you have to use a list of lists containing all the necessary information that you want to pass to the editor. Each list element is associated with a code block, starting from top to bottom. This method allows you to provide line-specific warnings or errors, enhancing the interactivity and functionality of your code blocks within Lia script. If this seems too complicated, you can also throw an error by using Lia error. The second parameter is used to define the number of code blocks you are using. Then, all you need to do is provide detailed information, similar to the previous example, to specify the line numbers and error messages. This simplifies the process of adding errors to your code blocks in Lia script. Teaching other language basics is also possible. For this example we applied JSCPP to run simple C++ programs. As for all previous elements, it is also possible to apply some basic styling attributes to the editor. By default, code snippets that are not executable will not show line numbers, allowing them to be used for pseudocode. However, executable blocks will show line numbers, indicating that they can be edited. You can apply the following attributes to make these definitions explicit. We have tried to use the common ace notation for these attributes. These attributes need to be applied per code block, as demonstrated in the example below. Change the initial line number to any number you prefer. Change the default font size, which has to be defined with pints. Whether it is an executable snippet or not, there are different default values, you can either set only data read only to make it read only or pass it a boolean value similar to read only. This takes an integer to represent the default tab size replacement. Your default theme as in your settings is applied, but you can change this to any of the ACE themes. Use this to highlight aspects of your code, you have to apply the following pattern. You start with a row and column and end with a row and a column. Then you can apply one of the predefined colors. You can set your own color with the CSS RGBA function, but do not use spaces in this function. The type is optional, but you can choose between one of the following types. If you want more than one marker, then simply separate different marker definitions with a colon. Check out the following collection on Lia script templates. Most of them provide a functionality that is implemented on the basis of editable code snippets and macros.
This is similar to the at abcjs.render with Next to just showing the notes, it is also possible to directly edit music with the Leo script editor. All states and versions will be preserved. Simply add the at abcjs.eval macro to the end of the code. Display the ABC defined music with default options, which will render them as musical notes and add the possibility to play the music aloud.